I was called, started uh, in February 2010. We started as uh, the Intensive Flight Trials Unit or IFTU, wherein we have uh, explored the full envelope of the aircraft, operationalized all the weapons and explored all the profiles and set forth the procedures to be followed on our aircraft. Uh, post our commissioning, our major task which will remain is the integration with the aircraft carrier Vikramaditya. The aircraft carrier Vikramaditya is expected to be commissioned end of 2013 and we envisage our training to start for carrier integration in the early part of 2014. I will just briefly explain to you about the aircraft. Uh, the MiG-29K aircraft is a derivative of the MiG-29B which the Indian Air Force has but the aircraft is completely different from the MiG-29B aircraft. It's a larger aircraft, it's a heavier aircraft and unlike the MiG-29B, this is a swing roll aircraft. It specializes in air-to-air -air dominance role as well as air-to-ground targeting of uh, enemy structures. In addition, the aircraft is has got a glass cockpit, state-of-the-art avionic systems and a quadruplex digital fly-by-wire aircraft. This is the only aircraft in India which has got digital fly-by-wire. So what is a digital fly-by-wire? A digital fly-by-wire will give us the capability to Add weapons. If you add weapons, then the stability of an aircraft gets adjust, uh, gets shifted. So the control laws have to be changed. In analog fly-by-wire, it requires major rework. And in aircraft which are not fly-by-wire, it requires even more work. But on this, you just have to change the algorithms for the control laws. That is a major, major advantage. So subsequently, if some indigenous weapons uh, we can integrate onto this aircraft, we do not see any major integration problems as far as the flyworthiness of this aircraft is concerned. Uh, I will explain to you about the aircraft. This is the air-to-air -air refueling probe. With the help of this probe, we mate with the refueler aircraft. This aircraft can also do refueling. There is a basket which is called the drogue and we go in close formation and we connect up the probe into the drogue and thereafter pressurized fuel is fed into the fuel tanks so it's a it's a big force multiplier air to air refueling we are able to enhance the ranges we are able to double our time just for ease of understanding if i am supposed to rotate an aircraft after every one and a half to two hours i don't need to do that because one aircraft will do the job of two or three aircraft now. So that's a major advantage which we have. Uh, we have a multi-mode radar fitted on this uh, aircraft. It gives us situational awareness in the air-to-air -air domain as well as the air-to-ground targeting. I will explain to you how this aircraft is different from other conventional aircraft which land on runways. If you see the size of this nose undercarriage, the technique of landing an aircraft on the carrier is a controlled crash because you have to land with a precision of plus minus five meters. So you must have uh, all sat in uh, civil aircraft, you would not have felt the bump at the time of landing because the pilot cushions the landing. Over here, we don't have that luxury. We have to impact at that particular point. Otherwise, the wire will not be engaged. And if we impact at that particular point with a rate of descent, the undercarriage has to be very strong. So, uh, look at the size of this nose undercarriage. It is, uh, an aircraft is coming, it is going to, this nose undercarriage will bang on the deck with a very large force. So, it has to absorb that kind of force. So this is what differentiates 
the undercarriage system is one of the system which differentiates this aircraft from other aircraft. In addition, the landing speeds are very critical. You cannot, uh, I don't have the luxury of landing at any speed. My accuracy is in the region of around plus minus two knots. Two knots is plus minus five kmph. Very, very uh, accu uh, large accuracy is required because safety issues of arrestment are there. So the ship also needs to come to know. So, uh, what you see are these system of lights. These actually tell the speed of the aircraft. It's a very technical term. This is called the angle of attack. It tells me, tells the observer on ground, what is the speed, what is the angle of attack. So if I am in the green, if he sees green, he knows it is safe. If he sees amber, he knows that my speed is less, but that's not dangerous for the carrier, that's dangerous for me. But if he sees red, then my speed is fast. I, it's going to be unsafe for the carrier because the carrier arrestment wires are catering for a particular load to absorb a particular kinetic energy. So this is a sector which a pilot should never get into when you're coming for approach. Uh, these are the hard points. Uh, fighter aircraft support their weapons on hard points. Uh, we have four hard points on either side of the wing and we have a hard point under the fuselage. Uh, what you see in front of you are weapons. We have anti-shipping missile over here. We have rockets. We have BVR missiles. We have electronic warfare systems with us. So catering for a particular mission, I can change the configuration. If I want to undertake only an air-to-air -air mission, I can have all air-to-air -air weapons. If I want to undertake only air-to-ground mission, I can have only air-to-ground weapons. So that way we have to mix and match and meet the mission requirements. Another thing which you see on this aircraft are those white strips, if you can see. Those are actually used for night close formation and they are NVG compatible so that the light does not scatter and disorient the pilot. So at night, we do close formation with respect to each other, which is required for air-to-air -air refueling at night, because uh, we also undertake the buddy refueling role with us, as well as it can also be used for tactical advantage. I was just explaining to you how this aircraft is different from other uh, aircraft which operate from the runway. This is another feature. You see the size of this stabilizer. It's as good as a wing. And this is required to give it control because we want to land at minimum speeds. If we land at higher speeds, the load on the undercarriages are more. If the load on the undercarriages are more, the undercarriages have to be designed heavier. If the undercarriages have to be designed heavier, it will add to weight penalty and that reduces performance in the air. So you see everything is all linked up. A lot of innovations have been done to make this aircraft very comfortable to fly at low speeds, which is a very, very uh, distinguishing feature of naval aircraft because they have to fly low, they have to fly slow, their landings are, have to be with precision. We have two engines which give us a thrust of 9 tons each and what you see is this is the arrestment hook. It's really strong, it's really strong. It has to absorb the complete kinetic energy and if you see it has to caster because if it does not caster, if there is a little wind from one side or if there is an offset to one side, it will have effect on the aircraft handling after touchdown. So it, it, can, it has to cast a, this is what is a reusable th uh, equipment. This is the shoe. This is where the wire will get arrested over here. So this, the aircraft will be, uh, the, when the aircraft is coming for landing, the hook will already be down. This will be extending down further and the arrestment wire will hit here. Now the wire is just not uh, a wire which is attached to a structure. 
the kinetic energy of the aircraft has to be destroyed in a controlled fashion. If I come and impact against a wire, either the aircraft will break or my body will not be able to take it. So there is a reel out. The wire reels out under the force of hydraulic pressure. So that the negative G on my body is within tolerable limits. As I was talking about the big stabilizer which we have to improve controllability, we also have a host of high lift devices to reduce our speed. So these are huge, huge flaps. They come down fully. And that gives us get that gives this aircraft the required amount of lift to reduce the landing speed. The ailerons, they also add to lift because it's a digital fly-by-wire aircraft, the ailerons act as uh, lift enhancement devices also. The stabilizers, since it's a fly-by-wire, the stabilizers help in controlling the roll because you can move them differentially. So all these uh, features have made this aircraft capable of operating on the aircraft carrier, without which it is very difficult to operate these, these aircraft. We have a cannon fitted, internal cannon fitted over here. which we can use both for air-to-air -air roll as well as for air-to-ground roll. If given a choice, I have to, I have to shoot down a slow-moving aircraft. Why do we waste a missile? We can shoot him down with a gun. Uh, this aircraft also has stealth features wherein uh, the way the structures have been built, the the, uh, the material, the structures uh, of the structure, uh, it reduces the radar signature. So that helps us wherein we are picked up later. So that is an added advantage on this aircraft.